Hello and welcome to episode two for my Stilettos Out day two convention. Um, for starters, if this is your first video you're seeing in this series, I highly, highly suggest go watch my day one video, which goes over everything that happened with day one, except for a couple things, which I'll address in a second. But start there. It's going to be more fun. You see the whole journey. Um, but I'm going to assume that if you're still here, you've already seen day one. Um, I'm going to start by saying there's a couple of things I forgot to talk about in day one, which is crazy. I didn't realize it until I was reading through the comments. As I said, I was speeding to get that first episode done. I really wanted to get it out to everybody as quick as possible because I know people who didn't attend really wanted to see some content from the convention. I totally understand. I would have been the same way. So I worked really fast and I ended up missing a couple things. So I am starting today's video by addressing some of the things I missed. But first, I want to say if you're enjoying any of this content, like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps a lot. I know basically every video on YouTube says this now, but it really does help out and I'd really appreciate it. So let's go into what I forgot to address on day one. And that is, I didn't even talk about what I bought from the Style Lab and I didn't talk about the story at all. Like I said, oh, I'm so invested in the story. I spent so much time trying to figure out the story and anyone who saw me at the convention probably saw me at some point like arranging clues and stuff like I was dedicated to it and I didn't talk about it at all which is I don't know why I forgot to do that so we're gonna do both I'm first gonna start with talking about what I chose on the style lab to buy for myself and then also what in the story I am at then let's do some story stuff so I'm gonna be reading off some of these cards it's a lot of text so I'm gonna be skimming it a bit but you know what? actually I'll read the whole thing it's fine so the 2024, this is the story for the Style Lab. It says, through various intermediaries, the ultra fashionable team of the New Face Agency has been offered an absurd amount of money to obtain by any means necessary what they have been told is jewelry collection of great value recently recovered from an unregistered plane crash that killed the entire crew. Rumor has it its billionaire owner who wishes to remain anonymous uh, was ready to pay anything to get their pieces back and Lucas's edgy friends were mo more than happy to oblige. Now stored in the archives of the SSB compounds in London, UK, the Times announced that the most peculiar collection was set to be shown to the public for one evening only. So the only way to retrieve it was to meticulously plan and pull off what would prove to be the heist of the century. Does the team understand what they are? I don't know why the light is against me today. Okay, I think I fixed the light issue. Let's see if we can get back to this story. Where was I? Um, da, 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 da. Does the team truly have what it, they understand what they are about to do? While SSB researchers announced that the pieces on display were essentially a strange collection of diamond encrusted jewelry, it seems as if there was more than meets the eye here. As elegant components fit together somehow to form some sort of nefarious device, no matter new face has a job to do and they will get it done with style in style sorry so essentially we meet the team and they're trying to rob the ssb of some type of weird jewelry and we did see that if you watch my day one video after they talk about the build a doll they kind of show it um i did not know what that was i it did not click in my head i know what it is now and i'll talk about it towards the end but you guys saw it let me know if you figured it out um and then we have the story from day one how far i got in day one um, I did decently well. So right here, this was like our intro story. Um, starting in the 1950s, SSB, um, which is the secret, the stop, secret Style Bureau, um, and many other small, smaller undercover informant... Oh my gosh, I am messing up tonight. <sighs> smaller undercover information agencies, such as the FPI, Fashion Police International, began hearing whispers of an oddball theft ranging from petty crimes to high-stake heist involving the disappearance of various luxury goods, artifacts, as well as random prototypes of various top secret inven inventions owned by private collectors and or industrialists happening all over the globe. Random pieces have also disappeared from ancient temples, including an ancient stella dating back to the pharaonic time, pharaonic era. We're just gonna finish this with this lighting. It's more moody anyway, it's fine. Um, so where was I? Pharaonic era, which vanished without a trace, never to be seen again publicly. As the decades passed and an exaggerated number of unsolved mysteries started to accumulate in the SSB archives, 
Various high profile suspects were identified, but soon exonerated due to firm lack of evidence. In each country where the crimes occurred, one investigator after another would be assigned to the cases in these somewhat low profile cases, but was seemingly made to forget about them, each time leaving the thefts to be unresolved dossiers in the archives of the SSB, as no one could effectively connect the dots. But are all these thefts truly connected? What's the real and what's the futile and irrelevant to these cases? Something must be brewing after all these years and it's time to figure it out. Who could be behind all of this and just what are they trying to achieve with all of these stolen elements? So here it says, there's been a bunch of crimes and we're kind of gonna go over them and they're like, but are they connected? Um, kind of a spoiler alert, there are some red herrings involved um, in this. I ended up figuring out what the red herrings were on day two, um, I would say I kind of put it together. And by that, you could just kind of tell like what wasn't connected to the main storyline. So that wasn't too hard. And I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But now it's a lot of reading. I'm sorry, if you don't like this part, of course you can skip through it. But for the people who really want to know the story, we have one more card from day one. Um, it says the case, the, the date was uh, May 19th, 1957. In Monaco, it was a theft assigned agent, Sugar North. So if you remember correctly, oh, where'd I put her? Oh, she's in my hand, I'm so ridiculous. Agent Sugar North, this was Constant Madison, Agent Sugar North. So this is her report we're listening to. So May 19th, 1957 was a day to remember in Monaco. The day of the Grand Prix had finally arrived and the crowd was especially glamorous. Uh, with every high profile Monte... Okay, that word I definitely do not know. Monegisk in attendance along with the entire who's who of the automotive in industry. The city was especially vibrant and beautiful. All types of car manufacturers and investigators were trying to outdo each other with sensational announcements and unveiling the latest tech, all promising to revolutionize this booming post-war industry. Among them, among them was one of the few female entrepreneurs of the time, Monica Frost, the richest woman in the world and the CEO of Frost Conglomerates. So we're listening to her story and she now mentions a character who we know who it is. It is, uh, oh my gosh, that's that same word that I didn't know how to pronounce right there. Um, we have Eugenia Perrin Frost as Monica Frost. So right here, we have Agent Sugar North writing about Monica Frost, which is our Eugenia. So she says, do 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 um, She was set to unveil a series of micro servo motors that would revolutionize the industry, ready to make a splash at the Grand Prix. Frost invited hundreds to attend the lavish affair she had planned. The event featured complete demos of their latest innovations mounted on luxury cars showcased by beautiful scantily clad models. The, that moment in time would become one of the most talked about events of the year, and for good reason. While the excitement and glee of this outstanding evening went on, the lights suddenly went down and just like that, the only prototype of the main servo motor in existence disappeared from the lead demo car. A well-known French top model from the East 59th Agency was soon found tied, confused, in the back of the demo car, babbling hysterically that she had been hypnotized and kidnapped. Clearly no one noticed that an imposter was impo impersonating her. Monica Frost was stunned. This theft would set her conglomerate years and would set her conglomerate years and hundreds of thousands of dollars back. But who could have done this? Some of the evidence collected included high-speed photos of the crowd that were taken within seconds of one another, which proved without a doubt to be one of the guests had escaped the scene. But who was it? Could they have been the perp? Other random things were collected, torn up plans and train tickets, and the forensics experts took photos, most of them seemingly at random. Mysteriously, every PI who started to get too close to the truth would just forget what they had found and had nothing to report. 
We heard that some even turned up in the psych ward. This rare piece of tech, it's so ahead of its time, it's destined to never resurface, it seems. Most of this makes little sense. So, basically here in the story, we have uh, the, we'll get to the story with the Style Lab later. They're kind of present day, so their story doesn't really resurface until the very end of the convention. But this is where our first big juicy detail comes in. We have Agent Sugar North, right here, Constance, telling the story of a big moment where Monica Frost is unveiling this new invention with a motor that's supposed to revolutionize everything. But um, then they find a scantily clad model. Oh, where did I put her? One sec. So they found one of the scantily clad models that Monica Frost hired to be a part of the show was uh, completely impersonated. And she was a French East 59th model, scantily clad, Hello, I Candy Victor uh, Rue. So we already have the first three characters showing up in the storyline. We have Constance writing about Eugenia and her hired model. And the model is saying she was impersonated and it wasn't her the whole time. So that is the first storyline. That's all we can figure out. But then um, we had some clues like we had a ticket to the London flight. Um, it was just from baggage claim. We were given, it's right here. We had some evidence showing off like the Grand Prix in Monaco and the photo that was a second later. Um, I didn't really find details from this. Like I saw a piece of the photo missing. And then what was really interesting is we had a ripped up ticket right here assigned to Elisa Bianchi, Bianchi um, going from Monaco to Switzerland. Um, we, we only had one piece, we got the second piece later, but still, uh, I just showed off both pieces. This is the other piece from the Poppy Lunch. And that is the Elise character. So that's the story so far. We've got all the characters, we've got all that. So great, caught up on the story. You can comment down below what you're thinking so far, but there's more to come. Hello, so for some reason, the part where I recorded me talking about like what I got in the Style Lab didn't rec like record correctly. So I'm doing this differently now, hence the outfit change, maybe the lighting change, I don't know. Anyway, I'm talking about what I decided to get from the Style Lab. Um, I ended up buying the entire Style Lab, but I'm not keeping it all to myself. I'm actually splitting it with two of my friends. So I'll tell you like what I'm getting. And then if you want to see like, after I'm done with all this, you want to see like reviews of the rest of the dolls in the Style Lab, you can check them out because I'm sure they're going to be making content with those dolls. We'll get to that in a second, but I'm going to start off with my original um, impression of the Style Lab. Um, I kind of talked about it in day one. I thought it was a pretty cool theme. It was definitely a heist situation, um, not the clue situation I was hoping for, which still I think that theme would have slayed. It would have been so good, but this was still a really cool one. Um, I will say one thing before I even get into the dolls. Um, back in the day one video, something I meant to talk about was the lighting in the Style Lab room was really horrible. Like it was specifically difficult to get good footage of the nausea because they had like this purple light that was beaming directly on her and she was in this purple outfit as well. So it was really hard to get footage of the nausea, but I feel like the heist room wasn't really, well, the Style Lab room wasn't really set up well for the dolls. I think what would have been really cool is having like some type of fog machine, a couple like red lasers or something. So it's like, you know, those spy movies where they're like coming down from the ceiling and there's red lasers or they have to do like weird moves and stuff. I think that would have been really cool. And I I don't think it would be too difficult. Like, I feel like that's something I could do with a couple like light machines and stuff. Um, but like just some static red stro like um, 
static red lasers and with a little bit of fog at the bottom. I think it really would have helped build the atmosphere of like what the style lab was about. But anyway, let's talk about the dolls now. So I am getting three of the dolls and three outfits. And like I said, I'm getting the entire style lab. So we are including the Build-A-Doll here, but I'm just gonna start with who my favorite was from the entire style lab. We're, we're talking about dolls, then we'll talk about the outfits. Ayumi. She is my absolute favorite from the entire style lab. I'm so excited. I told you guys, if you watched my predictions of what was to come from the convention, I was hoping for a Dominique and an Ayumi. We did not get Dominique, unfortunately, but we did get Ayumi. I think she's so pretty. I really love her. I'm really excited she was there. So yes, she was my favorite doll from the Style Lab. Then the next doll that I really liked, surprisingly, was Erin. I really liked Erin. She was giving me kind of like a modern day Daphne Blake in a way um, from Scooby-Doo, like with this orange hair and everything. And she looked so fun. Like she looked really good in person. Not that she doesn't look good in this photo, but she looks so good in person. I really liked her in person. She was really beautiful and that's what won me over with Erin. And then the last one that I am getting a doll of is going to be the Reyna. Um, a lot of people said this, I totally agree with it. This Reyna was giving Poppy Parker um, in her full look. Like it's definitely giving Poppy hardcore. Um, with the print and just the styling, it's just reading Poppy. Uh, but what I will say is that, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I felt like she was like the main character style lab. Like she seemed like, I know she wasn't, like Lucas is supposed to be like the leader of the team, but I felt like Reyna was, she just gave me the vibes of like, ah, this stilettos out convention, da da da. Like with her whole like kind of Sherlocky vibe. So I really liked her and that's the main reason I'm getting her. Um, and now we can talk about outfits. Reyna, I'm getting her complete. I'm getting the outfit and the doll. She's the only one I'm getting complete. Uh, yeah, I just loved it. I think it looks great on her and I'm excited to have the whole clue thing. I don't know how I feel about the bucket hat. I might lose that. We'll see once I build the doll. The second fashion that I'm gonna be getting is the Naja fashion, this purple one. I really like it. And what I'm gonna be doing, I can go ahead and tell you guys, is this fashion is going on to Ayumi. Because look, Ayumi has that lavender purple eyeshadow and I think it's gonna pair so well with this outfit. Like, I think that's gonna be so cool. So yeah, Ayumi and that fashion. And then the last fashion I'm gonna get, which I'm really excited about, and this is why I did the entire well, not the only reason, I also wanted to help out my friends, but one of the reasons I really wanted to get the entire style lab and split it is so that I could get the Build-A-Doll so that I could get the Build-A-Doll fashion. So the criminal kitty look. Um, I'm not getting the doll. I'm not gonna have Eileen. I wasn't super like, oh my gosh, I need her or anything like that. But I love this outfit so much. This bodysuit, the skirt, the headband's cute too, but really it's all about that. And then the diamond necklace, ugh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then also there's gonna be that buildable accessory um, that we talked about. So yeah, got her. Um, and then if you're interested in seeing the rest, um, my friends, they are gonna be going to Alfie at Doll Megaverse. He's gonna have the boys and their outfits and then Colette and Violine and um, uh, Naja. They're all going to my friend Miko at xoxo.plastic. So I'll put up their little profiles right here so you can see them. But yeah, check them out if you want to see more of them. But that is what I got off of the Style Lab. So we can keep going. Okay, so I think we're sufficiently caught up. Sorry for the lighting and everything. I don't know what was going on with the ring light. But we're caught up. Uh, the story-wise, we talked about the Style Lab. Now I will finally let me from day two start the introduction for the rest of this video. Okay, so it is day two of the convention. Um, I'm currently on my way uh, from my mom's house to the convention center. I'm like, what, 20 minutes away, I think? Yeah, I'm a, I'm so sorry, I have a bit of a ways to drive. 
Um, today is just the poppy luncheon and then the fashion bazaar tonight. I definitely want to look at the clues and see if I can put more of the story together. Um, like I said, I want to find a head to uh, find for that body. So there's a couple things to do today. I'm really excited. Um, I'm also extremely tired. I did not get enough sleep last night, but yeah, I'm excited and I'm ready for another day of the convention. So here you can see the image and gift set. They updated it and they went ahead and added in the purple outfit. Um, the doll is the same, but I figured I'd show off like how the outfit fits in. Now we're jumping straight to the Poppy Parker luncheon. And as usual, the centerpiece was already on the table. So this was our first look at the centerpiece. I was a little disappointed by her, but we'll talk more about that later. So one of my highlights for this lunch was actually, um, as I mentioned in the last video, I was at the same table as Sinue Guzman and he actually brought the prototypes of the Veronique and Vanessa two-pack that he designed. Seeing these two in person was incredible. Everyone at the table was obsessed with them. We actually ended up replacing the uh, table centerpiece cardboard with these two dolls. I mean, just the details are so good. So now we have like them talking about Poppy and how it relates to our overall storyline that we have going on so far. That's where the, that's the next step of the adventure. So you're going to get another set of clues today. So Poppy over there, or is it Poppy? We don't know. That was the upgrade doll. That might be a character in disguise pretending to be Poppy. We don't know. So you have to wait. You're going to get another bag of clues today. And, and, for you know, and there's puzzles that you need to assemble. So. Yes. Then after that, it was time to reveal the next part of the imaging gift set. So, so that's the final part. <laughs> so that's Donna. So the scarf, the little scarf that she comes with is evidence. So it's the map of London and it shows you where the heist from the Style Lab is happening. That's on her little scarf. Super cute. All right, Super so, so yeah. this will go into that second component, and now you have a complete welcome doll gift set. Again, round of applause for Lynn. Um, Next in the presentation, they went over more of the details of the centerpiece bird of prey, Poppy. This doll is fabulous. I cannot wait till you guys see the little sample that we have that we'll have available after this. This jacket, it's like you've never seen it before. It is so much fun. So who wants one? <laughs> All right, are, so we feeling, are we feeling lucky? Yes. yes. Okay. okay, so Poppy Parker Bird of Prey is $180. And we are going to do, do you guys remember your numbers from last night? Okay, so we're gonna pick numbers. The first one we draw again, you can have the topper. Um, as well as an opportunity to purchase her. So let's pick it up. Let's let's pick a number. We'll let Alan pick. Don't look. Seven. Number seven. Okay, seven. Okay. 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 Pick another number. A number. Forty-seven. <laughs> Zero. Oh, ten. Ten. After the centerpiece, we got to get our food. We went outside, it was buffet style, um, you get your food. And honestly, the only thing I enjoyed here was the salad. The bread was hard, the rice pudding thing, weird. Um, yeah, worst meal of the convention. After <laughs> struggling through that food, it really wasn't good, you guys. Like, I'm not very picky, 
eater, but like that bread was so hard. But anyway, enough about the food. Next, they started, they put up the two poppies from um, the collection sales room situation, convention collection, uh, the Swiss Miss and the gold, oh my gosh, I forget her name, gold something. Gold, gold, the gold poppy. And they also brought up Raven Tate and they kind of had David talk about the inspirations and like where he got inspiration from and what his ideas was with the designs. Let's move ahead. Let's talk about these gorgeous poppies. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's another one where the fabric informed the outfit because um, every once in a while we get like a really special fabric that comes our way that we get from our supplier in China. And uh, that particular one, like it's a beautiful little brocade with little micro sequins on it. In the photographs it looks a little flat, like you can't see all the detail, but in real life you see all the little metallic gold, lurex in it, and uh, all the little beading and everything, and it's wonderful. And so I had like, I had to get on it, like let's, let's do something. And, uh, and then of course the doll, I wanted of course having gold and kind of plays off a of gold finger. And so we're kind of going back and referencing like James Bond movies. It's sort of like where my head was at, at designing the collection for what I did for Bond. It's so cute. And these Swiss Miss behave. So is that Swiss Miss, Princess Leia? Who's the, who's the inspiration there? <laughs> it's a little bit of both. It was uh, really when, when, when you have a doll set in Switzerland, you know, the first thing I think of is anything sort of stereotypically Swiss Miss with the braids and then and if I could have got away with a Durgle, if I thought y'all were like a Durgle, I would have worked it in. I would have had a lot of issues with it. But uh, but I love a little Durgle. So uh, I Alright, we're gonna go away from Poppy for just a moment. And this one I was so blown away by when I saw it. I was like, David! Oh. Okay, I love it. I did I would have guessed that that Jesse I love it. So, so tell us about the inspiration for Tate. Yeah, well, since Tate is part of the true line, of course, they're in a contemporary timeline. And so you wanted something. First of all, I was looking up spy terms. And um, I was fascinated that there was a term called raven. Do, does anybody know what a raven is in the spy world? Uh, a raven is a male spy who will use his uh, prowess to uh, get information, whether it be male or female. So like, like the honeypot version, but male? Right, right. Oh, we did not know that, David. Very That's risque. Raven, so. That, so that was the inspiration. Yes, that is the inspiration. So next, after he talked about that, it was time for a, another reveal. We had another sales room exclusive reveal, and I'll let you see that now. Are you guys ready? Can we get a drum roll on this? It's, uh, she's meant to coordinate with Tate. So since uh, Tate is her boyfriend in the storyline between them, uh, she's had this little micro sequin mini dress, baby doll, with the big silver bow. And then she's got little spikes on her heels. And um, if you can tell in the note, if you can see, her little handbag is actually brass knuckles. It's the handle, so. so she has a little bit of that. So she, and she coordinates well because her dress picks up the red tones from his hair. So, Ta-da, Tula Bell, she shows up, she looks great. Um, but the only thing is she is an addition size of 500, so there isn't enough for every attendee. But that's not even the most exclusive item of the convention, because then there's an item that has an addition size of 300. So let's see that reveal. And then we have one more item, which is a fabulous accessory pack. And so tell us a little bit about the model of course, our, our model is our lovely uh, ski girl. <laughs> so she is modeling uh, a trench coat, and it's actually a little dicky turtleneck because the idea is that it's a quick change spy outfit, so she could plop on a little turtleneck and over the existing outfit, and then put on the trench, pantyhose, shoes, 
there's her little spy camera and her uh, briefcase. Yeah, and if you guys, anybody doesn't know what a dickie is, it just kind of goes to here. So it's not a, a full shirt, but it's just a little bit. It's just a turtleneck and then like a little flap that covers the Yeah, so it goes great under sweaters and under shirts and obviously under a trench coat as well. Okay, so this accessory pack is limited to 300 and it's $75. So once we finished up our fun little reveals, it was then that we got a hint about the future of Tula Bell. And of course, let me remind everyone that Tula Bell is the granddaughter of Poppy Parker. So that's the, this is the connection, which is why we're discussing the collection during the, the Poppy Luncheon. And so the next collection coming up is called Prismatica. And it is um, it is the official Y2K inspired collection that you all have. Which is now vintage, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's vintage. And so when might we see this one? Very soon. Ooh, I like the sound of that, David. So after learning about the future of Tula Bell and the true line, we then got to our last reveal for this little lunch, and that was our Poppy Parker Luncheon giveaway doll. All right, here you go. Oh, 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 Poppy Parker. Hey! 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 So here were the dolls from last night. They had them upstairs. And I was like, a chance to film the dolls some more, why not? But honestly, it's easier to see in this lighting versus that harsh cell phone light. It's still not perfect lighting, but I think you can see a lot more details of Eugenia and Victoire so much better. Both dolls are so beautiful. Now here we get to the Poppy Parker reveal dolls. I really like this Tula Bell. This outfit's giving me New Year's for some reason. Um, then we have the last outfit for Imogen. I really like this one. It reminds me of Charlie's Angels, like the one with Drew Barrymore. Uh, then we have the outfit that was the most limited item of the entire convention. It wasn't for me. I didn't go for it, spoiler alert, but it was fine. Um, this Poppy, I think she's cute. It's just the jumpsuit comes off as cheap because of the sequin, I guess. But this Poppy I was in love with. She's giving totally spies in the best way possible. I really like her. Her outfit is just so fun. So yeah, there were some pretty fun reveals. I enjoyed uh, the Poppy Parker reveals and I wasn't expecting to have anything that I really enjoyed from this lunch. So that was a fun surprise. Now, this doll, turns out, was put into with the other design dolls, but just later than the rest, and it's such a shame because this doll is stunning. I had already voted, but I just wish this doll had been there at the beginning. She's so beautiful, so detailed, the story card and everything. If I'm honest, I probably would have voted for her if she was there at the beginning. So beautiful. After that, I took a lot of time to just sit down and put all the clues I'd collected from day one and day two together and see how much of the story I could figure out. So after all the fun of the Poppy Parker Luncheon, I literally just spent the time in between Poppy Parker Luncheon and the Fashion Bazaar putting together all the clues and trying to put together as much of the story as I possibly could, see like, what am I missing? What do I need? I also uh, ran into a lot of people and got to talk to a lot of people as well. But yeah, so this time was literally just spent socializing and putting together as much clues as possible. And we'll go over the clues later, I promise. I'm not gonna forget in this video, but I'm gonna wait till a little bit later because actually during the Fashion Bazaar, there was someone who came up and gave us even more clues. So we got more clues that night. But anyways, we'll get to the clues, I promise, but not yet. Let's get to talking about the Fashion Bazaar. 
So then the Fashion Bazaar starts and it's absolutely amazing. Um, I, I don't know, I didn't take any videos because it was literally so crowded, especially in the beginning. I was like walking around like this, bumping into people saying, sorry, excuse me, sorry, excuse me, almost the entire time. Like everybody was on top of each other, trying to see all the dolls and the good deals. Um, but the Fashion Bazaar was really, really fun, really cool. I enjoyed it. Definitely one of the highlights of the convention. Like just seeing one of the coolest parts, and I've talked about this with some people there, is just seeing some of your Grail dolls in person, even though you're not leaving with them. Like, of course, everybody loves to leave with a beautiful doll, but it was still cool just like seeing some of these dolls in person. Like I saw Billion Dollar Batty Alejandra Luna. I saw a RuPaul doll. I saw so many, so many dolls. Printed Pink Naja. Um, let me think of some more. I saw Legendary Status uh, Agnes. I did not see the original Legendary, the Silver uh, variant, but I did see the original Legendary Status Agnes. But yeah, it was cool just seeing all these dolls in person in front of you. Just so beautiful, really cool. And yeah, I enjoyed the bazaar, but I'm sorry I didn't get too much footage of it. But I did get this clip that I'll show now. So during the bazaar at one point, they started doing this like runway competition. It ended up kind of being like runway dance competition. I don't know, it was really cool because already it's exciting. You're surrounded by dolls and just looking at dolls. But yeah, in the middle of this, they just have this like whole show going on, which is pretty cool. And I think they gave like the top three some dolls. So that was pretty cool. So I know you have to be asking, Greg, what did you get the Fashion Bazaar? Did I complete my Build-A-Doll mission? No, I did not complete my Build-A-Doll mission. Um, it was really unfortunate that, so I was going around, if y'all remember from the day one, my little $75 mystery box, I got an FR white body. And I was excited because I was like, this is gonna be such an easy doll to complete. I feel like that's a easy body, like that's a standard body. And it's a color that's not rare, like a skin tone that's not rare. So I was like, yeah, I'll be able to find an FR white face. No time, that's gonna be so easy. I was right, I did find a couple FR white faces, but they were grail doll heads. So they were selling for like 170 to $200, just the head, because these were grail dolls apparently. And I was like, I'm not looking for an exclusive, hard to find, super rare head. I just want an FR white head and I could not find one for a decent price anywhere. And so that mission was a fail. But let's just say stick around for the day three video because hope is not completely lost on that doll body. Um, but I did actually buy some things. So I do wanna show off what I bought. So the first thing that I bought, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm gonna keep it simple and stuff like that. So I bought some earrings. So altogether, this was $3, which was fine with me. Um, Cause I don't have a lot of earrings, honestly. So I got these, I don't know how well they're gonna show up, but these little blue studs and they showed the Poppy Parker, like um, kind of modeling them, but they're like, they're a slight tint of blue. They could be white, but it looks like a slight tint of blue little rhinestone earrings. Then from that same store, it's these huge white dropstone rhinestone earrings. I really like these. They were very over the top and big. You can see how they look on the model there. And then just something I have never had is like hoop earrings, just like silver hoops, you know? So cute, great as a, what was it? Hanukkah gift with Gretchen from Mean Girls. Cute silver hoops or white gold hoops. And that's a uh, Poppy Parker showing it off. So yeah, I got some earrings. I thought that would be fun. Um, the main reason I did, I'm not gonna lie, is because I saw these hoops. One thought of Gretchen Wieners and two, um, I was like, I don't actually own a single pair of hoops in my entire integrity collection, so I wanted some. And then I found the rhinestone earrings and I was like, yeah, absolutely, it's worth it. Uh, then I ended up buying a doll, which was not on the plan because there have gotten plenty of dolls. So there was this table filled with so many new dolls and they were mostly like older ones. Like I saw a lot of Adele 1.0. Um, I saw quite a few East 59th dolls, but then I found this one doll and I was like, 
she looks different, but I really like her. Like something about her really drew me in and I didn't know who she was. Like I had no recognition of this sculpt whatsoever. I was like, maybe she's an older doll or something because the art style of the doll is just different. So I asked the um, person running the shop, I was like, hey, this doll, who is she? And he's like, uh, I was like, I don't recognize her. And he's like, oh, that's a Mitzi doll. And she fits like fashion royalty, stuff like that. And I was like, Mitzi, I know about this doll. That's the JHD fashion dolls. And I was like, I'm not gonna get involved with them. I'm staying to integrity. But I kind of like already had deep feelings about this doll. She was drawing to me. So I ended up getting her. So this is her. I genuinely don't know what release she's from or anything. My knowledge of Mitzi doll is little to none, but she just looked like an anime Integrity Toys doll to me. So I just really liked her. Like, I think she's super pretty. She has like really nice lashes, a pretty face. She's kind of like, maybe like Poppy Parker goes anime or something to me. I don't know. I really like her. Don't worry. I don't think this is going to start like a Mitzi collection for me. Maybe one day. I'm not like opposed to it. I'm just really focused on Integrity Toys right now. But something about this doll, she just like, I just couldn't take my eyes off of her. I was hypnotized. Oh, obviously I have her redressed in one of Redefined Luxury Kiori's outfits. She was not wearing this. This is an outfit I had on my Alejandra Luna, but I switched out for that Secret Garden outfit um, that we saw last episode. But yeah, I don't know. Something about this doll was just hypnotizing. She was very beautiful. Kind of anime. She really gives me like a bit of an anime character or anime art of a Integrity Toys doll. So yeah, she was pretty cool. Um, then I had something pretty cool was I ran into someone who watches this video. Um, and in case you're here, their username is, which again, I'm not using anybody's names. I didn't ask to use people's names. So I feel like that's extremely rude, stuff like that. So I'm not using names, but a username, I feel like that's okay to use. Um, but a user that comments on many of my videos, I uh, hope you're here. Um, is Mom Beach and she had the most incredible art of the Poppy Parker dolls. It was so beautiful. Um, in case you are here, please comment down below like if you have a shop or something where I can go see your stuff because I didn't like grab information. I was like running around shopping. I didn't grab any information of how to like find your stuff and I genuinely would love to see some more of your stuff. It was so beautiful. Um, and she let me get uh, a bookmark off of her table and I she had a bunch of different poppy ones that were beautiful, just beautiful. And I chose the Apreski poppy she had art up because it was like related to the convention. So I thought it was cool. And look at this art. Like, how cool is this? Like, isn't this beautiful? Ooh, I don't want it to like mess up at all. It's so beautiful. She even got the beauty mark, the blushing. It's so beautiful. So yeah, if you are here, if you have a shop or anything like that, um, I would genuinely please comment down below because I would love to find it again. So, and then anyone else who like loves this stuff, they'll probably enjoy it as well. But yeah, this was really, really cool. I really like this. I, I honestly want to find some way to display it. I have to figure it out. Okay, so now for this next part, um, I am still in disbelief, like uh, a bit of shock. Um, again, this is gonna be about an interaction with how someone, if you were here, I'm not using your name out of respect, but if down in the comments, you want to make yourself known, I will definitely like pin your comment, whatever. But so I was shopping and I was walking around and then someone called my name and I walked over to see who it was. And it was this gentleman who asked if I still wanted the Vanessa Perrin in the ball gown. And at first I was like, what? And he's like, the Vanessa Perrin in the big dress. And I was like, Grace Lorraine Vanessa Perrin, who is like, was one of my Grail dolls. Um, one of the dolls I regret not getting when I had the chance to. And I was like, yeah, but depends. Uh, what's the price? Because at the Fashion Bazaar, a big part of it is haggling prices. And this is just a gift I do not have. I can talk about dolls. I love to talk about dolls. I will review dolls. I do all that. Haggling for dolls is just a skill I do not possess. It is not in me. Um, like even for example, when me and my husband, we go traveling, uh, he does all the haggling if we stop somewhere like a shop for a souvenir or something. 
sometimes he'll even be like, Greg, you stay outside. I'm going to go in and get us a good deal because I always agree at too high of a price. I fold too quickly. I don't know. Uh, haggling's just not in me. But so this guy was asking if I was interested in Vanessa Perrin. I was like, I could be. It depends on the price. And he's like, no, do you want her? And I was like, it depends on the price. And then he was like, no, I want to gift her to you. And immediately I just like freeze. And I'm like, I, I can't accept that. Like, thank you, that's very nice, but I can't accept that. Like, let me pay something and stuff like that. And he's like, no, I want to do that. Um, like, I'd like to give her to you if you want her and stuff like that. And I was like, okay. Like I was in a state of disbelief and shock. And then he walked away and he came back and he handed me a box of a doll life Vanessa Perrin, a doll life Vanessa Perrin, oh my gosh, Graceful Rain Vanessa Perrin. And she is right here. That is her COA. So I now own this doll. Like he fully gifted me this doll, which I, uh, I cannot believe it that I, I genuinely like was on the verge of tears when he did it. Like I was just like, I didn't even know how to react. I was like frozen in a way and I didn't know what to say. I didn't like, I was like, thank you and stuff like that. But I was like, none of that felt like equated to like the, how overwhelmingly thankful I was and like how insanely unnecessarily sweet and kind it was like, I don't like, if you are here, thank you so much. Like I I promise you this will be something that is cherished in my collection. You did not have to do this. Like literally even someone coming up to saying like, hey, I enjoy your content. Even that like is enough to have me smiling for like a week straight. But like this, I was so overwhelmed in like a positive way and I am still in disbelief. As you can see, I, I feel like I can't even like make eye contact with this doll because I can't, I cannot comprehend that interaction. I'm still in a state of disbelief, but this was like, this is genuinely like one of the absolute sweetest things. Um, thank you so much if you are here watching this. I really, I overwhelmed in such a positive way. I don't wanna even say thankful because I feel like that doesn't do it. And again, it was not necessary. I'm not showing this to brag or anything like that. I am simply just wanting to thank that person as well because one, talking about my experience, but thank that person because um, if you were here, I was supposed to go see you on the finale night. You gave me your table number and I was supposed to go see you on the finale night. So I recorded my videos. I did the thing, finale night. You guys will see it all. I'm really excited for like, to show you finale night. It was probably one of the best nights of the convention. But by the time I finished filming my video of the area and everything, I got to the table that was listed. He was completely gone. The whole table was empty. So I couldn't even be like, hey, you know this person, where are they? Um, and we didn't exchange contacts or anything like that. So in case you are watching this again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. She will be very much cherished and a crown jewel of my collection. Thank you so much. That was insanely sweet. Thank you so much. So with that, that wraps up everything from night one. We had the Poppy Parker, the reveals, um, the dolls. Oh wait, we have to talk about what I bought from the reveals today. I keep forgetting this. Um, so the dolls that I bought today, first off, of course, this was for free, Image's second outfit. I really like this outfit. I wasn't a fan of the first, but this one was really nice. It was giving me Charlie's Angels, but like from the like uh, Lucy Liu, Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz era, like I feel like she would fit into that team so well. So I did like that a lot. Definitely my favorite outfit of hers. Probably what I'll have her displayed in once I get her between this and the Eugenia Secret Garden, because that would be cool too. I haven't decided yet, but I do like this outfit, this was fun. So yeah, this outfit was a keep. Then speaking of giveaways, we had this Poppy, 
which this poppy is so cool to me just because she reminds me of Totally Spies. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'll put up an image of that real quick. She's just that vibe of the Totally Spy show so much, which gives me a piece of nostalgia. That was one of me and my siblings' favorite show. Like all of us, all three of us would watch it together. We love the show. So like, she just gives me the nostalgia vibes. It makes me feel like warm and fuzzy on the inside. So she's super special for that reason. And she's a poppy that really surprised me. It's all about the outfit, honestly. This outfit is incredible, but yeah. I am going to be keeping this Poppy. I really like her. She's very, very cool and gives me the warm fuzzy feelings. Then I actually made a purchase on this day and the doll I ended up purchasing was Tula Belle. So originally I really liked her. Like right off the bat, I really liked her. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna go for her um, since she's like limited. So I just kept her in my cart originally, but when it came time to check out, I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and buy her. If she's still available, I'll get her. And she was available. So I'm really excited. I think she's, this is the prettiest Tula Bell that has come out so far. So pretty. And her outfit, I don't know why, but it gives me New Year's Eve. Like when I look at it, I think New Year's Eve. Like that is the first thought I have. Um, so yeah, I bought Tula Bell and I really like her. She's really cute. She's really nice. Um, so these are the three that will be added to my, con my personal collection from today's reveals. So yeah, and then I mean, I guess you can talk about like how I also got this doll and then the Vanessa Perrin. So technically got five from this day of the convention. Um, yeah, so that is everything for this video. I think it's a little less than the video for day one, but do not worry because there is so much to come with day three. It is the last day. It is the day that the most stuff happened. And it's not like a, I don't mean it in like a scale, like day two was the most boring day. Not at all. I had so much fun at the bazaar. I was gifted a doll. So like, not by any means. I just mean like as far as recorded content, there's a lot of recorded content to be coming on day three, the finale day. Um, I'm excited to show you guys everything, share it all with you. I'm also like sad because like I already had the post convention blues and now this series, I'm only one episode left, which sounds crazy, but I feel like once I finish that series, the convention uh, time, that's like closing the chapter officially on this whole convention experience for me. So not excited to finish this last one, but I will do it as soon as possible as I can for you guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it, but I'll go ahead and let Pass Greg close this out. Okay, so it is the end of day two and it has been an amazing day. Like, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, we've gotten more clues. Um, I'm gonna save like the whole story portion. I'm gonna be like going over that, like not in person cause I wanna be able to flip through all the clues, but I'm in my hotel room um, just for tonight, literally. I just wanted to be able to get a full night's sleep, honestly. Cause I've been driving back and forth from my mom's, which is nice, but just tonight I'll get a room and then tomorrow's the big finale day. So today was a lot of fun. Today was the Poppy Parker luncheon and I wasn't like too excited. It's Poppy Parker. Um, it's kind of like, it's fine. And I would like to say the event was good. The centerpiece doll, I wasn't like blown away by, but the giveaway doll, the one we're getting, um, like the secret agent, like hot pink and orange suit, I'm obsessed with, I love it. It's my favorite Poppy from the whole collection so far, like the whole convention. She's amazing. She's giving totally spies. I really like her. Um, but after that, today was mostly just kind of like chill socializing. I was um, worked on the clues, trying to figure out the mystery and stuff like that. And then it was the fashion bazaar so it was my first time ever experiencing that and it was really cool. Like I had, there's so many dolls. I've never seen so many dolls in one place and like the amount of grails I saw with my own eyes and I just had to keep walking. I told myself, I gave myself like a limit of like 300-ish that I could spend um, at the bazaar. And I kind of looked around, there was a Alejandra Luna, the original, the billion dollar baddie and they were asking 350 and I was like, okay, I'm gonna wait and see if I can like get the price down later. They 
were pretty steady with their price originally and then I came back later, somebody had bought it, tragic, it happens. Um, then there was a RuPaul doll, the golden one, which is probably my least favorite of the modern RuPaul dolls, but it's still a really nice doll. Like, it's not bad, it's just like out of the like pink one, red one, the gold one's probably my least favorite. But they were asking 250, I was gonna try to get 200, somebody else bought it, you know? It's just, early bird gets the worm, you snooze, you lose. So I didn't get any of that, but I did not walk away empty handed. Um, one, someone gifted me one of my grail dolls, like literally gave to me, which I cannot believe. I like, I literally almost cried on the spot. It was, oh, I can't believe it. It's amazing. But we'll get into that later when I can show off that doll and everything. So feel free to guess who you think um, I got, but it was definitely one of my grail dolls, which I cannot believe. Um, then I actually bought a new doll and I am kind of shocked by this doll because she's not even integrity. Um, there's a lot of new dolls, a lot of fashion, a lot of incredible stuff. Um, I didn't record during the bazaar. I didn't feel comfortable. I don't know, maybe it would have been okay, but I didn't want to like just film, um, people's shops and stuff. And I also didn't want to like every table I went to just be like, Hey, is it okay if I film? And it was like for a while there, it was like shoulder to shoulder bumping into people. So I was like, okay, I'll just have to tell you it guys. But it was really amazing. Room full of dolls, grails, everything. Some really good prices, some really bad prices. Like, I'm not gonna say really bad prices because you can charge what you want for your dolls if you're selling them, but just really, really high prices. Um, and yeah, that was about it for it. Um, today was literally just a lot of socializing the Poppy event, and then the Fashion Bazaar. It was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know how much content I'm gonna have for day two because I didn't record the Fashion Bazaar, which was really the biggest event of the day, kind of. Well, besides the Poppy. But yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I'm literally about to, as soon as I end this video, it is time for me to dress Alejandra Luna in the Eugenian Perrin Secret Garden, the one I got from the mystery box yesterday. I might buy another mystery box tomorrow since I didn't spend much at the fashion bazaar, but oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I'm going to do that. She's going to come with me to the gala dinner tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm excited for tomorrow, the big day. I'm like sad it's ending, but also I'm excited for the finale day to see the centerpiece doll for the whole event. And then the gala doll, the W club lunching. I am crossing at, ugh. so based off the clues, we know the final doll is going to be a doll with the letter A, and a lot of people are expecting Agnes. Even I think it's going to be an Agnes because she is a fan favorite. It's a convention. She always shows up at the convention, but I'm hoping with every fiber of my being, it's an Ameline. I would love for it to be her. She's just so pretty, and I really like the face sculpt, and I don't have one of her yet, and I do have an Agnes, so we'll see, but anyway. I'm having a great time. So many beautiful dolls. I've been shocked and yeah, I'm really enjoying myself, but that is going to be it for this video. Day two wrapped up. Um, as always down in the description below, you can find all my links, uh, like my Instagram, which is his.dolls. And yeah, I hope you're all enjoying this. I'm really going to try to film as much as possible tomorrow to really like get the final day on video because tomorrow we have the W Club luncheon and the um, gala dinner. Um, I have to get my outfit. Like I need to like lint roll it and there's something. I have to get my tomorrow outfit ready. Um, and Alejandri. But yeah, I'm just excited. I uh, hope you all liked it. Again, if you enjoy my content, a like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out. I appreciate it. It keeps me motivated to make videos like these. And I will talk to you all in the next one. Bye.